Hey, thanks for hitting play on my podcast, man. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know about a really cool Bleeding Edge Podcasting 2.0 feature. If you've heard the show before, you know I always sing the praises of this really cool movement that is making waves in the podcasting community. Being able to see images as the show plays pertaining to the topic, you can click through preset chapters, you can stream in-app support directly to the podcaster via micropayments. Well now, Oscar Mary and his team on the amazing Fountain Podcasting 2.0 player app have just dropped a killer update. Cross-app comments. Now, over time, more Podcasting 2.0 apps will unlock this feature, and ultimately, you can post to and read the same comment thread regardless of what Podcasting 2.0 app you're using. Even cooler, the podcaster can also see these comments and respond individually to you. And that's what I'm going to do. Read the fabulous tutorials on Fountain.fm to get your podcaster wallet set up. After that, follow the Intergalactic Boombox on the Fountain app, open up an episode, and you'll see the Comments tab. To unlock the ability to send a message, you can spend any amount, as little as three Satoshis, which is smaller than a penny. I will reply to you. Gamifying comments is a ton of fun, and you can get in on the ground level. Fountain is totally free to download and use as a podcast player, and you can voluntarily supply as much or as little for the in-app podcast wallet. Streaming these micropayments in-app as you listen or to post comments helps support indie developers and podcasters. Visit Fountain.fm for all the info and take podcast interaction to the next level. Fountain.fm. And now, our feature presentation. Attention all podcasts of the Solar Federation. We have assumed control. We have assumed control. We have assumed control. The Intergalactic Boombox. Sha Ka feel good. Sha Shabada. Shabada Ka feel good. Cities breaking down on a camel's back. They just have to go because they don't know whack. So while you fill the streets, it's appealing to see. You won't get out the county because you're bad and free. You get a new horizon, it's ephemeral style. A melancholy town where we never smile. And all I want to hear is the message beep. My dreams, they got a kissing. Because I don't get sleep, no. Bueller. Bueller. Thank you, Ben Stein. All right, that's enough. Hey, put your hands in the air and wave them around like you just lost all muscular control. (laughs) Welcome to the Intergalactic Boombox. I am your host, who loves toast the most, Kyle Abair. I'm a voice actor for anime and video games, and this podcast is for nerds. Yeah. I'm orbiting above the Earth right now. Just go with it. The IBB is a self-sustaining gigantic spaceship whose sole purpose is to podcast once a week and find itself lodged in your ears. Please don't seek medical attention. I meant to do that. The question of the week. How long should movies be? Dave Jones, Podcasting 2.0 Podcast, sent me 21,112 sats. From the Castomatic app, he says, I love long movies, but yes, for intermission. Very helpful to the bladder. Voice actor Mike Payne says, somewhere between 90 minutes to two hours max. There are some exceptions to that, but usually anything longer than two hours is just too long. My buddy Super Tim says, two hours is a good length. Longer than three and I'll wait for home release. Lord Comet, the two hour mark for me is the sweet spot. Three hours is a bit much, but if I love the movie, I will sacrifice. Rod AI, it's all about the material. If I'm interested, no matter how long or short it is, I'm game. Personal investment makes a film fly by. Disinterest can make even a short film feel like an absolute slog. The Machine says, hour 30 to two hours is my sweet spot. Sapphire says, the longer the better. Bill in the Isekai says, if it lasts 120 minutes, I'ma need those old school 50s intermissions midway through the movie. Gohan can't take it anymore on Twitter says 115 minutes. That is very specific. Little Karibo laughs in Andy Warhol. Ah, yes, Andy Warhol had a famous, what, 15-hour movie of nothing but a shot of the Empire State Building. 
Omid says, if a movie is more than an hour and a half long, I'm walking out of the theater. King Jalal replied to Omid saying, why did you go to the theater in the first place? And Omid replied back, why did you bother asking a question there's no answer to? Settle down, settle down, you're both pretty. Jonathan Rio says, I refuse to go to cinemas now, so when watching films at home, I don't care how long it is, as long as it's good. Yeah, you start pushing three hours, you better have an intermission in there. No question. Where do you find yourself watching videos the most? Not movies, but like video content. Do you go to YouTube? TikTok, Instagram, somewhere else. I spend most of my time watching video content on YouTube. And I haven't watched live TV in years. So YouTube is my TV, you know, whether it's a live stream. Most of the time it's pre-recorded content, though. I just check throughout the day watching various geeky channel stuff. A distant second, only because I just scroll through a few minutes a day, is TikTok. So where do you go to watch some video content? At me, at Boombox Pod. <laughs> NewPodcastApps.com. Grab yourself a free podcast player with images, chapters, and supporting micropayments to send your love directly to the podcaster. This very show, the Intergalactic Boombox, is enabled to receive that directly in app. NewPodcastApps.com. Check out Fountain, Castomatic, Breeze. Get your podcast wallet set up and start streaming micropayments during playback. Speaking of Dave, he sent a boostagram. Boo! That's a custom amount of sats or satoshis saying R.I.P. Shiggles. One of our uh, alien crewmates, Shiggles, got blown out the airlock last week for just being really stupid. But, you know, it's like the Three Stooges around here. No one's really hurt. I mean, come on. Also, other sad cat supporters, Dreb Scott, Midas from Fun Fact Friday, and Stem R42. Hello. Shiggles. Dude, you're alive. Well, honestly, I've been worse. Eh, okay. So, I just heard you read Dave Jones' message. You know, I didn't know he cared. Yeah, well, he, he does. Here, have a clean act. <laughs> Thank you, mate. <sighs> uh, yeah, have a souvenir. Yeah, why is it floating? Dave. Thank you for the bottom of my seven hearts. But I would like to state that the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. You don't say. You see, my species can totally exist in the vacuum of space. Yeah, you know, this podcast is like comic books. No one ever really dies. Oh, 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 order in the court. Oh, God. I object, Your Honor. Oh, wait, I know. Objection stained. Shiggles, it's sustained. Exactly. Look, what are you doing, Gitz? Why are you dressed like Sigmund Freud? I just wanted to give Shiggles a free therapy session. Seeing his mental health is a big topic here. Of are you a qualified therapist? No, but I sat through a whole lot of political debates at family reunions. Uh, fair enough. Okay. Shiggles, yeah. just take a seat on the couch there, make yourself comfortable. Right. Klondike bar? No, that's all right. I I'm trying to quit. Yeah, more for me then. Uh, how are you feeling since we blew you out the airlock last episode? Uh, oh, hey, Captain, yeah. can I borrow a pen and some paper? I need to look like I'm taking notes. Oh, here you go, man. Cool, 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 cool. Well, at first, I was like, what? Wait, let me write this down. What? 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 Right, with three A's. Please continue. I, I said to myself, well, this is going to put a slight damper on my plans to binge Pam and Tommy on Hulu. Yeah, they totally don't have Hulu in space. At least not until Elon builds it. Uh, you hit the north on the Bosenbotham. It's what I do. So, Shiggles... Tell me about your mother. Me mum would say, Shiggles, my darling, you are as tough as a $2 steak. Who needs oxygen to breathe? Overrated. Toads my goats. So I counted the few brain cells that I'd left as I wiggled me tentacles trying to fly in your general direction. Luckily, I whipped up a sign that says... S-O-S. Whoa, bro, Jack Horseman. Yeah? That sign actually said sus, S-U-S. Well, close enough, isn't it? I figured the chances of someone picking me up increased exponentially if they've heard of Among Us. Wait, did you kill someone on the spaceship? Oh, no. My mouth just wrote a check my body couldn't cash. Okay. But no arm, no foul, so no worries, Dave Jones. I'm fit as a fiddle and ready for love. Hey, Captain, can you hang me that blaster that looks like a camera? What? Okay, shiggle. Let's take a selfie for Instagram. Smile. <laughs> Gits, come on, man. Oh. Ah. Uh, I got a show to do. I'm getting better.
New teaser trailer for Ms. Marvel on Disney Plus just dropped. Series debuts on June 8th. If you haven't watched the trailer yet, check the link in the show notes. And then come on back. Looks to be skewing a little bit younger this time, uh, leaning more towards camp. But it is really nice to see some other cultures get some representation. Uh, oh, please don't be Karen. Please don't be Karen. Please don't be Karen. Slightly left of the Mississippi, you are on the air. Please don't be Karen. Hello, this is Karen. Yes, Karen. It's about time. It is about time they abolish daylight savings starting next year. How can I help you? I just wanted to say that Marvelous Miss Maisel looks simply marvelous. See what I did there. It's Miss Marvel. Slow your roll, Baldy McBaldhead. Um, Kamala Harris is one of my all-time favorite comic book characters. What? It's wonderful to see the first lady giving crime a justice sandwich. Kamala Harris is the vice president. Kamala Khan is Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. Khan. Uh, come again? Khan! I don't watch Star Trek, Captain Jerk. Anyway, Karen, bunch your tank on Miss Marvel getting her powers from a bracelet. You go, girl. I slapped a Best Buy clerk double hard thanks to my bracelet. Do you even read the comics? Well, I, 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 I look at the pictures. They are pretty, aren't they? Uh, in the comics, she can bend into any shape, change her appearance, all from the aftermath of a bomb explosion that unlocks alien DNA. Mm-hmm. But this trailer makes it look like they're going in a slightly different direction. Mm-hmm. They scrap that origin in favor of cosmic bracelets. Otherwise, to mainstream fans, people might say, oh, she's just a teenage Reed Richards. The change has a lot of Karens taking to social media. My idea. Birds of a feather. You leave Big Bird out of this. I'm going to guess it was a creative choice to distinguish her, so the show appears to stick to embiggening her fists and and closer mimic Captain Marvel. Par for the course for any comic book movie to alter the source material. And generally, those changes don't bug me. Besides, who knows? Maybe it's just one big, giant red herring. Why do you have to bring up the most disturbing scene in Game of Thrones? Okay, bye bye Don't you hang up on... Paramount Plus is bringing yet another Star Trek series out on May 5th. This one is called Strange New Worlds and will feature the character James T. Kirk, this time to be portrayed by actor Paul Wesley. Strange New Worlds is a prequel to Star Trek Discovery and the original series, where Captain Christopher Pike is large and in charge of the good old Enterprise. Ah, what now? Oh. Another unsolved mystery. Drew Grime for the True Crime Podcast. Get it right, Carl. Kyle, it's Drew Grime from the Drew Drew Grime Grime, True Crime Crime Podcast. Podcast. Immediately following the intergalactic womb blocks. No, no, it's not. Not at all. Paul Wesley is 39 years old. Uh Uh-huh. William Shatner was four years younger when he started Star Trek. Huh. And yet, Wesley is portraying a younger Kirk. A strange new world, indeed. Hence the title, Drew. Reminds me. True crime mystery. Oh, God. Boris Klugenheim was a 39-year-old introverted social butterfly mute. Mm -hmm. Smelled like bait, but was otherwise a swell dude. He had one goal in life, to be a forehead prosthetic-wearing alien of the week on a Star Trek series. Nice to have goals. But it was not meant to be. Aww. Someone stole all his custom-made forehead appliances, and Boris was left with nothing but his out-of-print Klingon dictionary, which did make him a chick magnet on Tinder. After numerous failed hookups, nothing brought Boris any happiness except shouting, Ah, you loogied all over my mic, dude. You're welcome. Aw, look at the time. Up your podcast player game at newpodcastapps.com so you can enjoy Podcasting 2.0. Chapters, images, a cutting-edge decentralized micropayment support system that works its magic in-app as you listen. If you like this show, tell a friend and reshare the clips I post from the new episodes each week. I now leave you with this thought from Schizo the DJ. When a woman says what, it isn't because she didn't hear you. She's giving you a chance to change what you said. Till next time, I am out of here.